guys, what's going on? It's your big sis, Miss B, and you are tuned in to Connecting the Lines TV. And I am honored and floored and thrilled about my guest today because, guys, this man here has set the standard for what collegiate level dance should be. Many times we only look at the marching band girls and the HBCU dancers, and we think that's the only style of dance that HBCUs offer. However, when I attended the illustrious Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University in Tallahassee, Florida, I was told immediately to either be in Mahogany Dance Theater or join the Epicurean Modeling Troupe. So of course, being the dancer that I am, I had to go see what Mahogany was all about. And I was so blessed my freshman year to not only have made the team, but to also represent the, 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 the company for several years, as well as hold executive positions. And I cannot give this man enough credit for some of the things that he has instilled in me, some of my little quotes that my dancers hear me say, because <laughs> we will get it done with or without you. <laughs> I couldn't say the other the part. Version. I couldn't say it to the other little kids. I can say it to the big kids, though. <laughs> but um, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Shapiro Hardiman from FAMU Strikers and Mahogany Dance Theater. He has taken the collegiate dance company and started his own nonprofit foundation, guys, that is setting a whole nother standard and a whole nother tone for Tallahassee, Florida. So I call him Pi. Y'all call him Pi, because if you call him Shapiro, he probably gonna know you don't really know him like that. <laughs> <laughs> and he calls me Baran. So if y'all hear him say Baran, just or he might even call me BB. So if y'all hear that, just you know. It is what it is. So how are you this evening? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. I'm so glad to have you. Glad to see you in the studio. How's it been going? It's going really, really well. You know, we're at the end of our summer and uh, we're preparing for a performance on tomorrow. Um, okay. A paid performance, by the way, uh, with um, Mc the, McDonald's, the McDonald's Corporation. They're doing a, um, a challenge with um, a matter of fact, a company, um, a store in uh, in Atlanta, they're battling like um, the, uh, what do you call it? Thing, the drive-through times, making sure oh. who could who could get the most customers um, in and out of the line with a certain amount of time. And they they have the host of um, activities like um, um, performers. They have the radio station out there and all. So we're part well, of that program. They, well, they're gonna lose because when Mahogany and the Sharkers start dancing, ain't nobody gonna want to leave the drive. <laughs> It's going to be packed, right? It's going to be packed. So how has it been? Um, and, and the reason, let me tell you why I decided to ask you to, you know, grace my YouTube channel. Because I come in contact with so many dance teachers. I have taken this. Oh, wait, wait, pause. So this is this is visual? I yep. thought they were just going to hear me. They can see me. Well, not right now. It'll oh, be, okay. I'm going to cut it up and put it on YouTube. Okay. But um, but the reason why I invited you is because you maintained a company on a college campus for over 20, 25? Uh, 25 for Mahogany and, and 33 for, my, for the strike. 33 Stryker. years. There is not one coach, one sponsor that I can put up next to this man right here. None. And I know... All, I know most of them, especially at the big HBCUs, but they can't hold a torch to this guy. So can you talk to the dance teachers and the high school coaches and the co new collegiate coaches on how it got started, what the vision was for it, and how you've been able to maintain and manage for so long? Wow. Okay, I'll start with the latter. Oh, you're a legend now. You already know. <laughs> we have, um, Mahogany was founded on um, October 9th. 1997 on the campus of Florida University. And um, with those dances, um, we had um, chartered members um, ranging from Miami all the way to um, DC, Maryland, Washington DC, yeah. Um, but those those dances, um, the, we got to start with mahogany. Um, let's, let me start with the Strikers first because they came first. They were first. The, the Strikers was founded on February 25th, 1989 on the campus of Florida University as well. And it started based on, um, there was a group on family campus called the Venom Dancers 
Hold on for a second. Hey, boss man, could you close this door for me, please? Yeah. Um, the Venom Dances, uh, the director at the time, uh, her name was Vanessa. She asked um, would I come and choreograph something for their, their team um, because they wasn't getting the response that, you know, she felt like they deserved. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I did, I asked her when I came, I said, hey, why don't you invite some guys um, in to dance with you all and, and allow us to um, audition them and um, we can take it from them. And so she did. So every girl had to bring in a guy who they thought could dance, right? So we we, we did it that way. And we taught them, I taught them the choreo choreography. And um, the day of the um, family game, the basketball game, the Civic, Leon County Civic Center, um, they, um, the, the announcer asked, you know, what was the name of the group? And we didn't have a name. So she said, call them the strikers. And they were like, strikers, strikers. We were like, no. The lady said, call us the strikers. That's what we'll be called, the strikers. And so we went on the on, on the court at a, um, and you notice I said we because I, I performed from the beginning. <laughs> of course. And so um it was a it was a standing ovation from both performances. And every time we would go like the different um step shows or any kind of um events at FAMU, they'd be yelling, we chanting, we want the strikers, we want the strikers, right? Um, and there was another group that was called the Atlanta Crew. Mm -hmm. Man, okay, they were really, 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 really good, right? They used to do all the little. Oh my God, yeet! Yeah, they just yeah. killing it. <laughs> and so, me being from South Florida, Miami, to be exact, you know, we was used to all that popping and throwing. It was just, it takes a lot to do that type of that type of dancing. You know, sitting in a deep second and, and um, thrusting your pelvis. You look at it they think it's easy, but it's really, really hard. Yeah, and you can like it. So we even. I even started a, a concept. It's called the Urban Soul. But when we actually use it, we we added a, a contraction with the with the pelvic thrusting. Mm -hmm. So when you see us actually like, I guess you said throwing, um, popping, and all, all that kind of stuff, we're actually contracting really really hard too. So to make make the movement look really really big. So anyway, we had it all, had an audition. That sauce. Hold on. That sauce dance teacher. He just gave y'all some sauce about making your dance look big. It comes from your core. Okay, keep going. Go, go. Yeah. <laughs> so some little, some little gems right there. <laughs> so we um we had an audition uh, with the guys who actually um came um and danced with us at that first performance. And from that from that performance, we wound up picking ten dancers. Ten, and we call them the ten originals. And I use the word originals because I didn't want to use charter. Mm. I didn't want to. Well, there was only one founder because it was just me. Um, and I wanted to be different. And we used the word um, original members. So we were the original members of of the Strikers, and there was ten of us. And um, it, we started off doing basketball games, um, talent shows, homecoming events. And it just got bigger and bigger every year. You know, we had well over like a hundred people auditioning for this organization. Um, we I started... remember the first time I saw the Strikers was on Apollo. Okay. I was okay. a little kid, and I matter saw... of fact, matter of fact, we went to the Apollo twice with two different names. The first time we went was it was um, the summer of summer of ninety three. Mm -hmm. Summer of ninety three. And we we went as the um um the strikers. And then the second time we went was 2000 and we went as the family rattlers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I remember seeing the first one, the Steve Okay. The, 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 the with Steve Harvey. Yeah. Wait. Oh, was 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 the first um name? No, his name. That wasn't Steve Harvey. That was uh, um this was in the 90s when Mark, I was Mark something. Yeah, Mark this was in the 90s when I first saw Yeah, 93. It. And Mark then something. when they were on in 2000, my mom said, here come the boys from FAMU. <laughs> I came to FAMU two years later. Bam. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> so so after, after we started doing all these different performances, whatever, um, I developed with another group. Uh, we didn't even have a name at that time. Um, well, actually, I started, I started the Fly Girls. And the Fly Girls were really, really like the popular girls of campus. That they were the captains of the cheerleader team. They were members of Delta, AKA. They 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 were like the it girls. And they came. We had an audition. And I picked some girls, and we did the Fly Girls for a couple of years. And it was around the time of Living Color was on too. Okay. So we kind of made the combination. And a guy named Lawrence Cole, remember Law? Lawrence mm -hmm. Cole. Oh, yep. Lawrence Cole was the one who encouraged me to start a female dance group. And I said, and that was in, he asked me the, sum, the spring of 97. 
he was like, Pa, man, you need to really get a girls group, man. Because um, the fly girls, we had stopped by then. It was like, we, it was a short run, like maybe two years, a two year run. And so we stopped. Um, but the ones that I met are still fly, which is crazy. Oh, they, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They, they are still just as fly. Like, yeah. it's crazy. Keep going. And, and so um, I, I went to Miami that summer. Um, and I had already wrote the Constitution and all that kind of stuff. He was in student government. Oh. And so we we got the constitution together and everything. And um, I went down to Miami. And there was this little girl that was in the back of the auditor, back of the um the um rehearsal. It was with live and color. It's one that, of my that, favorite that, stories right here. Go ahead that, and tell it. She's famous now. <laughs> that that, that, that memory, he had this group called Live and Color. And this little little chocolate, little black little girl was in the back, right? And she was just getting it. She was really, really dancing well. So at the end of the rehearsal, um, somebody told me she was coming to Tallahassee to go to Florida State. I said, well, really? So I went back there and introduced myself to her. Hello, I'm Shapiro Hardman. How are you? I'm from Miami as well. She, we wound up going to the same high school. I graduated from Miami Northwestern in 1984, and she graduated in 97. So um, her, she introduced herself as Tracy Young, a.k.a. Tracy Young Byron now. And it was her and another charter member by the name of Yolanda Smith. Um, so I was like, why are y'all in the back? It was like, oh, that's why we're not going to dance. This, that, that, because we're in the back and we got to dance these girls that's in the front. What I said, it doesn't matter where you at on stage, baby girl. You're going to be seen no matter where you are. Just like I was, I saw you from the back, from the front, way in the back, and I came to you. I didn't go to those other girls. I, <laughs> I was in the right too. in the front, but I came right. to you. <laughs> I came to y'all too. There's two of them back here. Her and Yolanda Smith. And so I told her, I said, I'm starting this group in, in Tallahassee called Mahogany Dance Theater. Matter of fact, I don't even know if we had a name at that time. Starting the dance group. It had to, we had to have a name. And so anyway, um, uh, and I said, I would want you to come uh, in audition for the company and be um, and serve as my rehearsal director, actually. I don't know if I told her right then and there I wanted to be rehearsal director. I know I made a rehearsal director off the, off the rip. So once I got the Shea Williams, who, who, who had danced with me when um early on when um I had some other girls just dancing with the strikers doing our excursion shows mm -hmm. and shows. Um the Shea Williams, Latoya Davis, Rena Thomas, um uh, Miss Bennett Pender, yep. Rika Wade, and Asila Sharif. Those six girl and young ladies, oh uh, and Mar Margot, Margot. I don't know if Margo did it early on. I have to research that. But it was by those six that danced with me prior to Mahogany started. So I invited those girls yes, to come. Yes, Bryson. Hold on, bro. Yes, Bryson. Come open the door. Hurry up. Because I'm recording. Um, were there supposed to be taco shells for the No, there was not supposed to be taco shells. This was taco spaghetti. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so we're going back to the charter members and then yeah. get into so, the Right, we, we 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 pulled those members that was dancing just in our excursion show with the strikers, and we made them charter members. So I um I got those girls together along with Tracy, mm -hmm. um, and then we had an audition that fall, and we brought on um, Tr um Tr Trisha Nash, Margo Dixon, Shanika Williams, um. I you remember all these names. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And when, when I tell you that audition, it brought out, I mean, the talent. We had so much talent at, at the university. And uh, Tracy went to Florida State and showed it on um, Yolanda, Yolanda Smith. So we brought in dancers from, from Florida State as well. Hmm, they so, have an actual um, dance program there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So we had well over 100 girls like I said, auditioning for the company, and we picked those, picked the, the charter members, and we went from there. And Mahogany, ever since then, just, just been evolving. I mean, we from, from modern to jazz, contemporary. Uh, we've yeah. done point work. We've done African. We've done, you know, you name it, hip-hop. We've, we've been there, done that. And the the the... The, I would say that the, our success is really attributed to the consistency of leadership. The leadership never changed. I have always been there from the very beginning. You know, so from the vision that what it was, what I wanted, I, I didn't want a booty shape type of organization. Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't want a hip hop organization. I just didn't want an African. I wanted something that was going to encompass like really pretty much 
everything, and that's dance. And that's dance theater. That my how we dance theater. Yeah, <laughs> so that's what we are with that. I and love so, it. I love it. So, I, okay, go ahead. Okay, so I have a surprise for you. All right, so we have our dancer boxes that we are doing. You get a pair of tights, a pair of fishnets, and two, count them, two pair of lashes. Whether you get a pair of our angel eye collection or you get a pair of these amazing, oh, look at this. Look at those. Blah, 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 blah. Any color that you would like, or you could get a pair of our. Be Rich Collection. Look at those. Those right there on the tips. I love them. And guess what? I am giving away $500. It's going into one of these boxes. $500. I'm going to box it up like this. And when I box it up like this, I'm going to put it in a box like this. And once I put it in a box like this, I'm going to ship it off to somebody. And they are going to win it. And guess what? It's only going to cost you 50 bucks. So get on over to the website, dancewarehouse.com, because you could win this $500 dance box. I'm sorry. And I was like saying it. So from th throughout the years, we're celebrating our 25th anniversary this October. And we're really, really super excited to bring in those dancers that have companies, um, groups, or teams to come back to from Florida University and perform on that Friday night. And the company will perform on that Saturday night. So we're really excited about that. I um been feeling this Beyonce alien superstar song, so I'm a, uh <laughs> I gotta find me a team to put some work on because I'm all over that song. Like yes, like okay, got to do this. So I love how you talked about something very um uh, very important, consistency, and consistency in leadership. Right now, what we're seeing a lot with these, um, especially the colleges, um, is a lot of changing a lot of changes and you know some of these people very well so you see how the dynamics of these um hbcu teams are and then you go into the high schools and you see how that leadership is changing now when girls come or guys too when they come from a particular um school or a particular um studio do you kind of already have an idea of what their skill is going to be depending on just kind of what you have already experienced from you know the past and working with people working with you know people from outside of just florida or tallahassee so to speak basically what what i do is what from the, from the beginning i used to really recruit I used to go to all the little schools in, in South Florida, and I had a relationship with those directors, relationship with those directors. And so it, and so the feeder pattern was like this. If you were coming to Florida a and University, no, if you were coming to Tallahassee, period, you wanted to dance with Mahogany Dance Theater. I didn't even and, know that. I walked yeah. on campus, and they were like, you know, uh-uh, uh-uh, go over there. <laughs> right. I didn't, and I had so, no idea. <laughs> You had to come there. And that was mainly in South Florida. They really knew because we had a big um, flux of dancers from the South, mm. you know, particularly the Miami area. And so again, and then we, we we did our annual performance down there. We invited all those schools, you know, all of the bands, all, all the marching bands, all the dance programs. So the word got, got out. So those directors was actually sending those dancers to Tallahassee if they was going to school. Um, as a Florida State to be a dance major or whatever the major was going to be, they were going to dance with Mahogany. But so when, when out of state come, what I would do is um, I started putting up videos, you know, when especially, especially when social media came about. Mm -hmm. We started doing like um, people could send in videos of, of uh, like a video submission of, their, of them performing um, any genre of dance, but we'll tell them, you know, We'd rather see you do something in um, contemporary, modern jazz. I need to like, see if you can dance. Don't give me the TikTok stuff. Right. <laughs> <laughs> not dance. Yeah. Hey, what is that? Okay. <laughs> You're not moving your legs, friend. <laughs> you not getting on the floor. Right. So I love that you said that you recruit because I can guarantee there's not many of these teams that have 100 people showing up for their auditions. Not just for the colleges, the high schools too. So talk about building relationships with your, um, 
I like how you said the the timeline. So how do you, how do you build those relationships to where you make the kids or you or not even make the kids, but you make it enticing enough to mm-hmm. where they're like, okay, I don't even want to look anywhere else. So what can okay. they do in their city to mm-hmm. make their either high school team because they can go to the middle schools and like all of that? What could they do to really make people want to join their organization or their studio? When it comes to recruiting, because a lot of these, they think they can just post a Facebook post and people going to show up and it don't work like that. So can you just kind of dive in a little bit about? Sure. Once sin, sin is believing. So a person has to see you, right? And, and when building relationships, you have to get out. You have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to go and build those relationships with people who have dances. Um, case in point with, with the Striker Youth Arts Project, uh, the nonprofit um, strikers and mahogany. We, we go we go into the, the um, high schools, middle schools, and even elementary schools. So they're seeing these dances, and that, and that would that would kind of feed my programs for the fall. You yeah. know, they want to be a part of what they see. You know, oh, what, how could I be a part of that? I have we have some little kids dancing. Okay, we invite them in. So I would encourage those those studios. Um, to go into the public school system, to go into the private school system and um, and offer your services by, by just performing. They want to see you perform. And once you perform, seeing is believing. You, you start passing out your flyers, getting the information out to those parents, and they're going to come. Man, I wish I was doing this like live, live, where people could ask questions because this is some good stuff. You don't even, you just talking, you don't even know how many, I'm over here taking notes. <laughs> you wow. know how many, yeah, <laughs> you're really dropping some bars. You're really dropping some good gems because they come to me and they're like, Miss B, I don't know how to recruit. Miss B, I'm having um, trouble with um, getting my dancers all on one accord. I'm having trouble getting them to dance in sync. So when it comes to, a place like Tallahassee or FAMU and you have all these people from everywhere, yeah. how do you gel them up? I know how you gel them up, but I'm just saying you tell but them it, how it, the it, things it, that you do to make your, because if you if you work well together, you dance better together. So how do you make woo. that happen? All right. Um, again, um, relationship is everything. So again, working working with these students, dancers from ev- all over the country. Right. And in particular, nothing against women, but women have personality um, <laughs> imbalances or um, competition. And you, and you have to know how to just bring it all together. Right. Mm. And the dancers have to know that in, nobody's indispensable. So you, you can come in here on this level here. And that's a high level, right? So you you have a, a nice, nice double, right? And you just stick you the sugar honey iced tea. Well, we put that triple on you. Let's see how you do it there. You know, little things like that. We'll we'll, we'll put we'll make the choreo- choreography a little bit more challenging just to bring you, just to humble you, just to kind of like bring you up the core, you know. But no, just there are a lot of things that what we do is the, the team building exercises and um, um, outside of Mahali rehearsals just to build the camaraderie together because if, if, they, if those girls and guys are, are feeling each other, like you said, if, if they can get along and, and they see the big picture, you know, and that's the end of the year concert, you know, because you have to dance and sing. You have to be a part as one. You know, you cannot like be on a stage with somebody that you don't like and you won't give them no type of like um, yeah. no kind of energy, right? You know what I'm saying. So you cannot like look away from the person. You gotta like look, look, be, look through them. Yeah, really look through them, and uh, and just be able to get along. You know, a lot of the academies, you know, we we we're like everybody else. You know, we, we're human, so we we have to we detect attitudes. We always tell them to check it at the door. I was about to say you you say leave you know, that door. <laughs> you're not you're not bringing it in there because it's it's all about that energy because we'll, we'll tell you quick we don't do that up in there that's not welcome up in there you can go anywhere else and and dance but you won't dance with us with that type of energy so let it breathe for a minute people 
There it is. You won't dance with us if you can't get your mind right. So check your attitude at the door. Oh. I, I love it because like I said, you you all college dancers get people from everywhere with on different levels. Oh yeah. And you know, sometimes you see the like you said, the person with the doubles and the triples who are on their leg. What makes you choose the ones who are the potentials? What 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 are some of the things that you look for? in someone that you not quite all the way there, but it's like, I, I think I could do something with this one. I like that you use the word potential because that's a part of what we do. We look for the potential of a dancer, you know, because everybody that don't have um, the resources to be able to train, have private lessons and all that kind of stuff, whatever. But when you see a person that have that natural ability, that yes. natural yes. ability. Yes, Ooh, it just give you chills. That's what you want. You know what I'm saying? Because you can take them, you can mold them, you can shape them, you know what I'm saying? Out of something really, really quick. And particularly guys, because a male, you know, we can take a, you can take a male and one semester, that's three and a half months, and look like a different dancer the next, the next semester, different dance. But again, you know, that natural talent, you know, flexibility, flexibility is really, really good, you know, if you can't do nothing else, you know what I'm saying, but you got all this back and all this facility, you know, and you can work on the technique, you know, that'll come, you know, good performance um, quality, you know, being able to move and being able to just move your body, be able to move well, you know, you may not have, like I said, the technique, but you could actually move, you can, you know, that makes a big difference, you know, and, I, and seeing the potential of a dancer, like, we have that eye. We can. We, we, we definitely look for the potential. Well, I love that you say look for the potential because sometimes coaches, dance teachers, dance studio owners, the one with the potential is going to either end up shining or she's going to be able to either be your manager or your rehearsal director. She may know how to do graphics. Mm -hmm. He may know how to do lights and sound. Absolutely. There's so many other aspects to performance than just being on stage. That is one of the things I really appreciated about um, being a part of Mahogany, being a part of our company. You used us. You found what we were good at. Right. And you allowed us to shine in the places where we were good at. And so I always credit you because I didn't think that once I graduated, I would be booking venues and getting tickets and making flyers and getting a DJ for the performance, make sure the concession stand is set up. I never thought that I would be doing that kind of and stuff. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but mm -hmm. I learned it in college. Mm -hmm. But when I got into the real world, I was like, oh, this ain't nothing. <laughs> it's just like a big time. Organization. Organization. It's organization. And you are um, dance teachers, dance studio owners, you are training individuals. You are training a person. I could probably tell you business owner. a potential business owner. I could probably count. I could probably name three of my teachers from elementary, middle, and high school. But I can give you every dance teacher that I ever had. From <laughs> to the end. I, I'm, I'm serious. Football players will tell you the same thing. They might not remember the teachers, but they remember the coach. Oh, they remember the professors, but they know the band director. So... The leadership is so important. Can you just really quick talk about integrity and having the integrity, not just as a leader, because some of these folks is just as ratchet and you in Florida. So I don't know about these majorette competitions or whatever, where they be fighting and doing all of this ghetto stuff, but oh yeah, it gets real ugly. And it really comes from integrity of the coaches. How do you maintain integrity with your dancers, not just, in person, but on social media as well? And how do you also maintain your integrity so that way people want to be a part of it? Because sometimes that can turn people off too, and that affects your coins. So you might want to 
<laughs> you might want to have some integrity about yourself, y'all. Right. So can you just, you know, talk about the integrity for your dancers as well as integrity for, you know, as a leader or in the leadership position? Like um, former president, first lady said, when they go low, you have to go high. You have to keep that level of integrity so high that you can't breathe if you go low. You know what I'm saying? You have to make it so uncomfortable for people um, that to do the right thing, you know, we set standards around here. You know, we have a high level of standards here and we're not going to lower our standards for anyone, you know? You may, you may call, some may call it cocky, arrogant, you know, um, but the being confident is, it's, it's, I'd rather take the confident dancer, a confident individual, or build a confident person any day of a person that just want to be lackluster. Um, you have to have a standard, you know, we talk about being, being all loud and ghetto and, and there's just certain standards that we have. Just let's start, start with the, just with the hair alone. You learn. Do not come on this bus with your hair tied, or do not get off the bus with your hair. You will not I, get off that bus like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hold know. on. Did I ever tell you my story on that? So no. my dancers went to 106 in Park, right? We went to 106. Right. Park. Yeah. So, did and, we. <laughs> so I told them, I said, we're going to re we're going to rehearse, but when y'all come downstairs, do not be in pajamas and do not have your hair tied. That's, that's right. They thought I was play pimping until I pointed that door to the outside of the hotel. And they said, well, what are we practicing at? Come on. I took them in the middle of Times Square, in the middle. You know, it's the, the middle. It's like the center of the universe. Uh -huh. And they ended up on the six o'clock news in pajamas. <laughs> Oh, wow. So for the rest of the trip, I was like, y'all the pajama mamas. <laughs> like That was uh -huh. the running joke. Uh -huh. and thank God it was cold, so they had coats and stuff, so you couldn't really tell they had pajama pants on, and some of them had like leggings and stuff on. But after that, I'll still see some of them girls now, and they be like, Miss B, remember? It's because of you. I don't come out the house looking crazy. It's because of you. I don't wear my bonnet out of the house. And I'm like, right. but I got that from you. Yeah. But we have to, you You have to make sure that you set those standards because a lot of times people just don't know though, Brian. And when you look at traveling, you travel, you represent not only yourself, your family, you know, so even if you want to talk at home, how to travel, if if you even travel, you know, you have to tell those people before they leave, these are the rules. When they get into this company, this is what the hair is going to be for this production. Do you have a problem with it? Will you be able to um, if let's just say if a person had uh, this wild, crazy hairstyle or whatever, and we tell them, well, the, the style of our, our production, the, the, the um, hair, it has to be in the pullback ponytail at the crown of the head. And for contemporary works, we want to be able to wrap it up and put it in a bond with a neck. Will you have a problem doing that? No, the answer is going to be no, but the answer is yes, we'll stop them at the door. Well, this concludes your interview because you wouldn't be a good fit for us because you would not be a part, you won't be a uniform and that's the uniform. If you have locks, you can pull them back, wrap them up, put them in a the bun. That's it. You know, I'm not telling you to take the locks out, straighten your hair, flat out of your hair, nothing like that. No, <clears throat> put it back in a bun. In a ponytail, high ponytail, it would be in the contemporary work, it needs to go into a bun. That way, again, we're traveling. So when you're getting on the bus, I don't mind them um, with their hair wrapped up, coming to coming coming to the um, going out of town. But the minute that we're about to to stop on that bus, you're gonna get an announcement, ladies and gentlemen. Please um, break your seat made up. Start preparing to um the to, um, to depart the bus. We want to make sure that you, all bonnets are off, head scarves are off. Put something on your lips, you know, and um, put on your high heels. Or if we didn't have high heels, or if there was a traveling sneaker, make sure you have a that traveling sneaker. And that was just it. You couldn't come down in the hotel. Once you got in the, ho once the hotel, you checked in. There was no running all down the halls and all that kind of stuff because we don't tolerate that. People come to hotels for two different things. I'll say one. <laughs> one of them is to sleep, right? 
and you don't want to be interrupted because you got folks running all up and down the hallway, That's putting right. those latches in the door. They slam up the door, and boom, up and down. No, we're not doing that. And you definitely not coming um, down that lobby in pajamas mm -hmm. for breakfast. Mm -mm. No, you're not doing that. You're not. You, you can't do it. because even as a child, I remember my, my my parents, my mother from a large family, ten boys, five girls. My sisters weren't even allowed to walk around the house with pajamas on. They weren't allowed that. It was just too many boys in the house. They was like, well, yeah. no, you know, they wouldn't allow it, you know. So again, a lot of those things just kind of transferred to me. I I just adopted it from listening to my parents. Like, well, no, you're not going to do certain things, and 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 then the, the the climate and the culture has really changed a lot. And so you have to be able to be able to bend with the time, but you got to teach those these kids value. Yes. value and responsibility you know so once they learn that you're not talking down on them they'll listen they'll definitely listen and you can't talk down on them. i always tell the strikers of mahogany never look down on anyone but always have them look up to you 